another can down. Oh, it's another can down. <coughs> this game's killing me. It's giving me cancer. I'm the salmon man. Last episode. Just something really wrong with Sayori. So we're gonna check in on her. Please. Something happened. Hmm? It's nice, I guess. Come on, I can already tell you don't like it. Well, you don't need to worry about what I think. After all, you wrote this for someone else, didn't you? Probably Yuri. Uh-oh. I didn't write this for anyone specifically. Maybe. That's not really what I meant, though, but it's okay. You're making new friends, just like I was hoping. It makes me really happy. And you're happy too, right? In this club? Well, of course uh, I am, I guess. Good. That's all that matters to me. Thank you, Kevin. Sayori, is there something wrong? Huh? No, nothing. I'm just a little tired today. <laughs> Alright, just tell me if you need anything. I will. Don't worry about me, okay? You can go play with everyone else now. Ooh, that made my spine shiver. If you insist, yay. I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. Sayori. Tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom humming to herself. She didn't want to talk to me last time. Yeah, no thanks. You didn't even... Next. <laughs> right. Kevin, your writing has only improved in the last few days. Every poem you've shown me has been nothing short of spectacular. I can really feel the emotions. I'm a little envious, even. I don't think it ever came to me this naturally. You're, that's the wrong way to put it. This never did come naturally to me, but I've been able to improve so much thanks to you really the example I was chasing after. Is that so? Yuri gently smiles to herself. This feeling, I'm so glad I got the chance to share my writing. I never thought I would feel like this. I remember you mentioning that yesterday. I can't believe you're so good at something and you've never even shared it with anyone. It's kind of a shame. Maybe, but it's not like I really had a choice. What do you mean? Well, Yuri smiles sadly. Kevin, during lunchtime, I eat by myself. Did you know that? It's a great time to find a quiet spot to do some reading. In fact, I always have some books with me. You could say I really enjoy reading. <coughs> Hold on, I'm gonna go puke. Okay. Don't worry, I didn't puke. I just, I needed a second. I needed, I needed just to get away from this for a minute and just calm the fuck down because... God. I don't know why. <clears throat> Let's get back into it. You could say I really enjoy reading. Well, that's one way to put it anyway. But books are so full of amazing and inspiring people. People you want to fall in love with. Or people you just know would make a really good friend. Cheerful people who always put a smile on your face. Or deep thinkers and problem solvers who discover the mysteries of life. So when you look at it that way, I'm surrounded by friends every day. You know... And those friends don't laugh at me. They don't tease me for spacing out all the time. They don't make fun of my body type. And they don't hate me for acting like I, I'm a know-it-all. People say that about you. I'm not a know-it-all, Kevin. It's the opposite. I don't know anything. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to make people see me as normal. I don't even know how to make myself happy. I have all these feelings, and all I can do with them is read and write. But it wasn't until now that I started sharing it with you that I really understood what was missing all this time, but I haven't really done anything. No, that's wrong. Just being patient and respectful, that's really important to me. I know I'm a difficult person, Kevin. I speak too slowly, I second-guess myself all the time, I read too deeply into things. But every time, you've always treated me just like anyone else. It's so rare that I feel comfortable with myself when I talk to others, but that's why every time I talk to you, I just feel really happy. I see. Well, I treat you how you deserve to be treated, Yuri, and if other people don't see it that way, then screw them. 
fuck them. I mean, I joined this club hoping I would make friends, and I would say I've had at least one success, wouldn't you? Um, if you put it that way, yeah, we really are friends now, aren't we? Yuri puts her head in her hands, but this time she's smiling as she does it. Oh. Do you want to show me your poem? Yeah, I do. Let me get it for you. Part two. <clears throat> okay. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing. We've already read all this. Oh, wait. Oh, wait a second. In the distance, a blue-green light flickers. A lone figure crosses its path, a silhouette obstructing the eerie glow. My heart pounds. The silhouette grows closer and closer. I open my umbrella, casting a shadow to shield me from visibility. But I am too late. He steps into the street light. I gasp and drop my umbrella. The light flickers. My heart pounds. He raises his arm. Tune stops. The only indication of movement is the amber light flickering against his outstretched arm. The flickering light is in rhythm with the pounding of my heart, teasing me for succumbing to this forbidden emotion. Uh-oh. Have you ever heard of a ghost feeling warmth before? Giving up on understanding? I laugh. Understanding is overrated. I touch his hand and the flickering stops. Ghosts are blue-green, and my heart is amber. Oh. Finishing the poem, I start to hand it back to Yuri, but instead of taking it from me, she looks away. Do you dislike it? Of course not. I just really know how... I don't really know how to respond. Despite Yuri's poem usually being cryptic, it wasn't hard to figure out what this one was about. Also, clearly isn't this poem that Natsuki said she wrote about, meaning I'm probably the only one she's showing this to? I don't know if I'll be... Oh, that's why she ran away. I don't know if I'll be able to explain this one. That's fine. I understand this one. <clears throat> Yuri is having an even harder time speaking than usual. <clears throat> Does this one mean a lot to you? Yuri nods. I'm not really good with words, but I'm happy that you shared it with me. So thank you. And I hope we keep spending time together. Despite my inability to make eye contact, I see a faint smile emerge on Yuri's lips. I once again try to hand the poem back to her, but instead Yuri gently takes my hands and pushes them back towards me. I hesitate in response in her warm touch. You can, um, the poem is, once again Yuri fails to form a complete sentence. You mean I can keep it? Yuri nods. I'd love to. Again, Yuri faintly smiles as if she doesn't want me to notice. You always, you always make me feel nice. I know I'm not good with people, but I hope that I can return the favor sometimes. Yeah, don't worry. I think you do a good job. Yuri finally turns back toward me. I guess we should move on before Monica says something. But I'm sure we can talk again later. Sure. I'm sure we will. Please. With that, Yuri timidly smiles at me and I return to my seat so I can put her poem away. I'm scared of this one. I kind of am. Hi, Kevin. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well, being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people? I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure, but whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. Ah. Anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. Your style's gotten so refined, Kevin. Yuri's been teaching you a lot of things, hasn't she? Well, I guess so. Yeah, I've been noticing how much time you spend with her. I think I've heard her say more words these past couple of days than she's talked in the whole year. Not sure how you did it, but that's pretty impressive. Well, she just needs some patience and a way to talk about all the things in her head, I guess. I'm still getting the hang of it myself. Mm. You're certainly putting in a lot of effort. You must really like her. Well, I'm feeling kind of bad for fucking Siori. It's awfully suspicious, you know, spending time with her in the club room every day, reading that edgy novel of hers. Well, I just feel bad that she has a hard time socializing. It makes me want to make sure she doesn't spend all of her time alone. <clears throat> Besides, the novel isn't too bad either, you know? All right, all right, I get you. Just be careful, all right? I know that Yuri isn't used to opening herself up, so if something bad happens while she's vulnerable, then it could be really hard for her. Her books aren't a total escape from reality, they're just a bandage. You say that like I'm going to hurt her. Sorry, I didn't really mean that. If anything, she might accidentally hurt herself. Video game, Sixth Sense. 
Why am I feeling weird? I mean, aside from playing this. I'll share my poem with you now, alright? Alright. <laughs> the Lady Who Knows Everything. An old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth, a lady who knows everything, a beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought, and here I am, a feather, lost adrift the sky, a victim of the currents of the wind, day after day I search, I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist, when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains, the last dim star glimmering in the twilight sky. Till one day, the wind ceases to blow, and I fall, and I fall and fall and fall even more. Gentle as a feather, a dry quill ex expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger, the hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. A lady who knows everything knows what I'm thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning, there is no purpose, and we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend, and your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat, and I pick up on a gust of wind. Now, this one didn't break the fourth wall. You know, I feel like learning and looking for answers are all the sorts of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or everything, but it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see, I never really put much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical, because if we had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? Yeah. You know, that's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. Are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. What's going on? I think you'd know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional. Oh yeah, that. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid it's not, not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling you that your writing is good, or okay, or bad, they'll want to focus more on everything that went into it, and the things that you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way, and it will make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little lecture club, don't you think? What are you doing? Game? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay, you three. We're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out... Hold on a second. It, is it just me, or did you say something strange just now? It, something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. Catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez, why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Ooh. Stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. Oh, please. Oh, please. In your books, maybe. Look, the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Ah, it seems you're right. Sigh. Sayori always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to, anyway? I thought you just went to pee. And Suki, please show some decency. Oh, come on. Uh, actually, she wasn't feeling too well and went home early. Is that so? I hope she's all right. Seriously? Of all the times to not go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well? Fucking make me feel bad, you bitch. So much for you two being a lovey-dovey. No, first of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Ho! Oh. Curious expression coming from Yuri of all people? Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier and everything is fine. What did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparation, so let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. 
That's right. Natsuki will be making cupcakes, but we might need a lot of them and different flavors. Can you handle that all by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted. And as for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Suri will be helping me design them. And as for Yuri, Yuri, you can, um, um, guys, can you help me out with something for Yuri? I, I am useless. No, 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 that's not it at all. You're the most talented person here, you know. Now Natsuki's pouting too. Jeez, even I can tell now. I guess I never gave Suri enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder on you and she's not around. Uh, that may be the case, but if I can't also be a leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. So, Yuri, you have beautiful handwriting, you know, so you should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere. Um, about that. I... I love atmosphere. Wow. Determination. Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares at her desk in focus and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great. You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, Kevin. The one who is truly useless. Don't say that. In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. Oh, I said that. Okay. It would probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. Oh. You could always help me out as well. I would... It would be really appreciative of that. Uh... That's... Is Monica suggesting I spend the whole weekend with one of my club members? How on earth are they going to respond to suggesting like that? Uh, I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, even if I don't know how to bake, if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give you. It's not like Monica is going to give me a choice, and you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. Natsuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um, if I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle the baking on your own. Kevin may not like to be around if you only make him out to be a nuisance. So therefore, he may be more suited to assisting with the decorations. You're fighting over me. Hold on, I never said that. How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? Sounds more like you're just making excuses for Kevin to, well, what do you say? I will be it will be extremely meticulous work. And baking isn't? Just what do you think, guys? Guys. Let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Kevin to decide how he'd like to contribute. Besides, he hasn't really gotten the chance spending time with me yet, you know. It's totally true. So I'm sure he's interested in, you literally just said. I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry, I was just saying though. Jeez, can we just settle this already? Yeah, Kevin, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Uh, of course. <laughs> Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. But of course, I'm going to go with... I'm going with Sayori. Because there's something wrong. I mean, if it's going to be anyone, then I prefer helping Sayori. I mean, we're already neighbors, and but Monica said... Monica said that Sayori was helping her. Jeez, do you really hate us that much? No? Sorry, I didn't mean for this to be difficult. Okay. I'll probably be most useful helping out Yuri. Me? Are you serious? Why would you- Natsuki, I can already tell you're about to say something mean. No, I was just saying- Ugh. So you'll be helping Yuri then, Kevin. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm glad. I have a bad habit of overthinking these things, so I think your assistance will be very useful. It's great to hear. Natsuki, will you be able to handle the baking yourself? I mean, yeah. I already said I would be fine. Okay, okay. Everyone can tell that Natsuki is feeling a little sour. So is that everything we needed to go over? Yeah, that should be about it. You guys excited? Well, excited may not be the right word, but I suppose I'm looking forward to it a little bit. You feel the same way, Kevin? I guess you could say I'm interested to see what the fuck is about to happen. It's good enough for me. What about you, Natsuki? Natsuki, what? Why is everyone yelling at me? I didn't even do anything. No, that's not what I meant at all. Uh, uh, Yuri anxiously glares between everyone in the room. I'm sorry for this. I don't really know why Kevin picked me. And also, your cupcakes are the best cupcakes I've ever had. They go really well with my tea, and nothing that I do for the event will compare to that, so... 
so. I get it, I get it. I'm kind of surprised, though. Why? Um, well, I'm the one acting immature. Oh, I already know that, but you're trying to cheer me up all of a sudden. I know, I'm not very good at it. I'm sorry if I said something bad. And Suki isn't the only one surprised. Monica and I are also taken back by Yuri's words. When she already has trouble with words, trying to cheer someone up must be far out of her own comfort zone. But I begin to understand. Yuri was trying to sound like Sayori. Even if it didn't work perfectly, I can tell she tried to say something Sayori would say at a time like this. Because Sayori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. No, I kind of appreciated it. I'm sorry for making a big deal out of nothing, but I'm going to say this. You better bet that my cupcakes are going to be the first part of the whole event. Ah, uh, I believe you. Yeah, I hope to see everyone do their best, but with that, there's nothing more for today, so I guess it's time for us to head out. Alright, let's get out of here then. Something weird is going on. Everyone packs up their things, and I start to follow Monica and Natsuki out the door as they chat between each other. Um... Yeah? Sorry, I realize that I don't have any way of contacting you this weekend. Uh, you're right, I can't believe that slipped my mind. Should I give you my phone number? Ooh, steamy. I think that would be the best way, yes. Alright then, Yuri and I exchange phone numbers. Okay, then I'll be stopping by your house on Sunday. My house? Is that a problem? No, not at all. I just thought that I would be the one going to your house since I'm the one helping you. I suppose that makes sense. But if you don't mind, I think I would prefer going to your house. Okay. In that case, it won't be a problem. I'm actually kind of happy she's coming to this dude's house rather than going to a place I'm totally unfamiliar with. Although I'm totally unfamiliar with my, with my own house in this game, so... So I'm not to press Yuri for a reason. It's not like it shouldn't matter much either way, so I'll just need to make sure that my room is clean. I hope I managed to make myself useful in some way. I'm not nearly as creative as you. Don't underestimate yourself, Kevin. I think that we'll make a very productive team, even if you only chose me because you felt bad or something. God, you're so depressive. You don't actually think that, do you? I don't know. It's difficult to come up with any other reason you may have chosen me. Getting the one reason with the most common sense. I chose to help you because that's what I want to do. But Yuri thinks to herself with an extremely tense expression. Yuri, you're overthinking this. You wanted me to point out when you're overthinking, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't realize. I'm telling you I want to. That's all there is to it. That's it. That's all. And to fuck you. Do you believe me? I... Yuri thinks really hard again. She looks straight into my eyes for a long while. I believe you. As if it took her tremendous effort, Yuri finally says that and relaxes her expression. And I'm really looking forward to Sunday. Yeah, I am too. After that exchange, I make my way out the door and Yuri follows. God. I can't believe this. Yuri is going to be coming to my house on Sunday. Even though I would have preferred to do this with Sayori, my anxiety still shoots through the roof. I guess I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point, but who knows what might end up happening when we're outside of school. She even told me she was looking forward to it. I shake my head. Why do I feel nervous that Sayori finds out about this? Because you secretly love her. It's not like we feel that way about each other. Besides, like Monica said, this is about the club. Now he's giving himself excuses. I have nothing to worry about. If I just go with it, then I'll have a good time. Holy Christ. Alright guys, go on to the next episode. Let's see what happens Sunday, shall we? My name is the Salmon Man. Thanks again for watching the train wreck that is the Doki Doki Literature Club. I still can't believe I've honestly gone this far. I'm putting all these episodes up at once because this is too much to do over time. Please leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next episode of Shit Train Doki Doki Literature Club. Bye.